Hi guys, it's Krista and Wiley here and I am doing some experimenting with this Pivo device. We're going to actually try to ride with it. I don't have my mic so I'm just going to do this video and then probably do a voiceover for most of the riding part. I just wanted to give you a summary and this is like totally unscripted. I haven't made out a script or anything for this video. But as you may recall from watching one of my other videos, Wiley was diagnosed in March with navicular syndrome. We have done a very conservative treatment on him by putting wedge pads and natural balance shoes on his front feet. He continues to be lame. It's a subtle lameness and navicular no normally is a fairly subtle lameness. We're still going with the conservative treatment now. I may end up doing some more treatment later. I have not been riding him a lot. And not that I can read his mind or anything because he's a horse. But he's a very engaging horse. And he does like to at least have interaction with me. I don't know if he always likes to be ridden. But we are going to ride him today. And I think just the... It's going to be very low impact. A couple of things that happen with navicular is the bone, which I'll, I'll do a segue over to show you what his uh, navicular bones in his feet look like. And the bone kind of deteriorates a little bit. But the other thing that happens, and this is more the cause of the pain, not the bone deterioration, but usually there's a couple of ligaments that go underneath or that are related to that navicular bone. There's two collateral ligaments and then there's a deep digital flexor tendon that goes down. Okay, I think there might be some tendons in there. I don't know. I'm not a vet. <laughs> I know that there is a deep digital flexor tendon that goes around the foot and I believe there's some also some side suspensory ligaments and stuff too that can be damaged if you do too much lateral work. Now I'm a dressage rider so I love lateral work and I feel that it gets the horse to rebalance his weight more on the hindquarters which will take his weight off the front end and will help him to stay sound because he has navicular on the front. Actually, it's his front right is the, the problem foot. But if I can get the weight, if I can get him to rebalance his weight a bit more towards the hind quarters, that will be a good thing. Now, I have read a couple of different books. One called Straightness Tra Training. It's a, by a German guy, and I will put it in the... I'll put it in the screen here. I can't remember what his name is. I took a clinic with him. And he does advocate things like lunging, which normally vets don't advocate stuff like that for navicular. But what he says was when you do any bending exercises with the horse, the horse's spine has to stay perpendicular to the ground. And when the horse's spine stays perpendicular to the ground, there is equal a weight on each of the four feet rather than what's called shear force when the horse does kind of like a motorcycle turn like this or like a barrel race and turn you see them and they're kind of like putting their shoulder into the barrel so any turning that I do with uh, Wiley here and I probably will do a little bit of leg yields which is not a lateral movement and it's good to get the hind, hind leg underneath him which as long as he can get that hind leg underneath him, it will put his weight a little bit more towards the hind quarters from the forehand. And we want to keep the weight off the forehand because that is his problem foot, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and ride here. I'm hoping my Pivo device will track me. Um, this is the first time I've used it for riding and it took me a while to get it set up. And um, we'll just go from here. Alrighty. Wiley is a quarter Arab cross, and I wanted to talk a bit about his conformation. I would not consider him really downhill, in which his croup is higher than the withers, as is a trait of many quarter horses. 
However, his neck is lower set than many other types of horses like warm bloods. This type of conformation tends to naturally add some additional weight to the front end in comparison to horses that have more uphill conformation. Here I'm doing some work with him where I'm getting him to stretch forward and down. When I do this, his head does act as a counterbalance to his body and weights the forehand. However, my objective with this exercise is to encourage Wiley to engage his thrill sling. Horses, unlike humans, do not have collarbones or any bony structures connecting their body to their front legs. So it's possible they can engage their pectoral muscles to lift the trunk and withers between the shoulder blades, increasing the uphill balance of the horse. Correct stretching can open the area between the shoulder blades and the trunk to more easily allow the thoracic sling to engage. Here I'm attempting to do a rather ineffective shoulder in. Executing a shoulder in movement will put some strain on the collateral ligaments of the hoof, but if done correctly, will engage the horse's inside hind leg and take more weight on the hindquarters, lightening the forehand. Looking at the video, my hands are too high, which is most likely changing the position of the bit in his mouth and causing him to drop his head and weight the forehand. Since it's not working, I only do this movement for a few strides and then I move on. I affectionately call this exercise the drunken pony as I do a series of many leg yields from left to right down the long side of the arena. I learned this exercise from a well-respected dressage instructor. However, some dressage purists might be a bit put off when they see this because my horse appears to be on the forehand and falling through the outside shoulder with a loss of connection from the back end to the bit. Due to his conformation, Wiley has fairly straight, tight shoulders. So the purpose of this exercise is actually to open up and increase the range of movement in his shoulders when performed correctly. To execute the left leg yield, I use a direct open right rein and right leg to move Wiley to the left. Here he seems to have more flexibility in the neck than in the shoulders. So in future execution of this exercise, I will try to remind myself to get the bend by using less of the rein aid and more of the leg aid. That's a wrap for this video. In the future, I plan to do more videos with Wiley, with riding and exercises, keeping in mind his navicular syndrome. When riding a horse that has some kind of physical limitation, I just try to keep in mind what the very famous Greek philosopher Xenophon said, and that is nothing forced can be beautiful. So I try to keep in mind that if I feel any kind of resistance in my horse, that I am listening to my horse and not just imposing my own will on him. I make sure that I can work through any resistances in a soft and accommodating manner. If you're new to the channel, I mainly talk about my work with my four horses and how I manage my finances and time while owning four horses. So if that's of interest to you, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.